Okay, we're going to do 10B, and on all these questions, the question, the given, is going to be 0 0.0625 moles of whatever the second product is. The second product, now, everything on the right side of the arrow are the products. This is the first product. This is the second product. So that's our given. And the unknown is going to be the first product. So we're trying to go to moles of the first product, which is this one. So we want to go from here to here in moles. So if we're looking at our mole map, we want to go from moles of this to moles of that. And in order to do that, we want to go over the mole bridge. And we get that by from the balanced equation. So we need a balanced equation. And this question does not give us a balanced equation. This question has a skeleton equation where the coefficients are missing. So we have to write the coefficients in here, 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 and here. So let's write it out on our paper and do it from there. So I've written out the skeleton equation. I'm going to balance the equation. I have one selenium, two, one selenium here plus another one here on the left side of the arrow. I have one selenium here. So right now I have two. Here's the arrow. On this side I have two oxygens and I have one oxygen here. On this side I have two hydrogens. And on the right side, I have two hydrogens. So hydrogen's good, but oxygen's not. So I need to balance the oxygen by putting a two here. That makes that two, and that makes that four. So if I have four hydrogens, I need to put a two here to make four hydrogens. That gives me four hydrogens. But that also gives me two seleniums here. Two plus one is three seleniums now. So I need to put a three here, and that makes three. So now I have uh, 3, 3, 2, 2, and 4, 4, and we're balanced. Next, I write the unknown, which which therefore was 0 0.625 of the second product, which was water. I go to my balanced chemical equation, and I see that there's two waters for every three seleniums. So I set that up. I put selenium on the top, three moles of selenium for every two moles of water, so the moles of water cancels out. And then I multiply 0 0.625 times 3, divided by 2 and I get 0 0.938 moles of selenium. For 10C, my given is water and my unknown is the acetate ion. So let's write that on our paper. So I've written out the skeleton equation. Be sure to leave a little space to the left of the substances so you can write in coefficients. Okay, we have lots of atoms over here. We have one, two, carbons, three, five, six hydrogens. We have two oxygens. We have one, two carbons. We have three, four, what are we, hydrogens? One, two, four, four hydrogens here. That's really, we should break those up. Yeah, we do. We have three, four here, four hydrogens plus another two. And we have, let's see, one, uh, <clears throat> we have one oxygen here plus another two oxygens. And here we have one oxygen plus one. Now this one stumped me for a little while. So I did realize I had six hydrogens here. So the carbons balanced, the, the hydrogens are balanced, but our oxygen's not balanced because I have three on the left and only two on the right. But the, so, but, but I forgot about a little trick where we have oxygen by itself, we can multiply by a fraction to get it to match. So if I multiply this two oxygens by a one half, well that changes this to one, and then I wind up with two oxygens, and I'm balanced, right? Now of course, I can't have a half, so what I do, the little trick is to double everything. So make this two, this half becomes one, two, and a two here, and then everything balances because now you have four carbons, 12 hydrogens, two oxygens, uh, let's see, yep, two oxygens. You have, 
All right, because you have one here plus two. Sorry, you have three oxygens because there's two here now. So three oxygens on the left. You have now four carbons. You have eight plus four hydrogens, which is 12 hydrogens. So let's balance there. And then you have uh, one oxygen uh, plus two. This becomes two. So you have three oxygens. So we're balanced. So our mole ratio is two, one, two, two. We're only concerned about this one and this one because those are the products in the question. And now let's do the question. So I've set it up. And since these coefficients are exactly the same, that's two moles of this for two moles of that, the twos cancel out. And then moles number, it's one and one. One divided by one is one. So the, you're going to have the same number of moles for the other product as well. So those are pretty easy. It's only that easy for moles to moles. 15B, in fact, all of these ask for the 25 grams of the first reactant. So the, the reactant's on the left side of the arrow. The first reactant's going to be that. That's going to be our given. And the unknown is going to be moles of the second reactant. And in this problem, the second reactant is this one. So on our mole map, we're starting with grams of the given. And we're going to moles of the given. And we're going over the mole bridge to moles of the unknown. And then we're done. So let's do that. So we've written out the chemical equation and now we need to balance it. We have one silver, we have one nitrate, we have one nickel, and we have two chlorides. We have one silver. Uh, over here we have two nitrates. Notice again, nitrates together so we can just count nitrates. And this uh, two outside the parentheses tells me there's two of them. And then we have, let's see, nickel. We're going to go in order, same order. We have uh, one nickel and one chloride. Okay, kids, let's see. One silver, one silver. That's good. One nitrate, one nitrate, or two nitrates. So I got to put a two here to get two nitrates, which gives me two silvers and two nitrates. So now I got to put a two here for silver. That gives me two chlorides as well. Two chlorides, one nickel, two nitrates. Two silvers were balanced, two, one, two, one. We're not really concerned about these right now. We want to look at this coefficient and this coefficient, but first we've got to write the given. The given is 25 grams of the first reaction, reactant, which is our silver nitrate. I need moles of the second reactant. So I'm trying to get to moles of the second reactant, which is nickel chloride. So I'm going to multiply and get to moles of silver nitrate first. So I say there's a certain number of grams. It's always one mole when we're converting grams to moles. I go to my periodic table for this one. I need to go to my periodic table. Okay, I worked it out here. We've got one silver, one nitrogen, three oxygens. One, one, and three times the molar masses. I added them all up and I got 169.9. So I put that here. Grams of, always put the substance in there. Now I want to go to moles of the other substance. So I go over the mole bridge using the balanced equation. For every two silver nitrates, two moles of silver nitrate, there's one mole of nickel chloride. Now I multiply 25, the rest are ones. So it's really just 25 divided by 169.9 divided by two. Let's do that. And I get 0 0.07 three, six moles. Although if it looks like it's 25 grams given, correction, they gave us 25.0 grams, which tells us we need three significant figures. 
So I have 0 0.07. This is not significant. First, second, third significant figure. I go to the fourth one. It rounds up. So it's 0 0.07. Seven, three, six moles of NiCl2. And that's our answer. All right, here's 15C. We got to balance it. One sodium. Oh, no, two sodiums. One here and one here. Two hydrogens. One sulfate. Or sorry, sulfite. Over here is two sodiums, one sulfite, oh there's also this oxygen right here, one oxygen, two hydrogens here, and another oxygen. It's already balanced. So we don't have to do anything, so it's one to one. That makes our life easy. And remember, we're starting with 25.0 grams of the first reactant, which is NaHSO3. And we're converting to moles of the second reactant. So we want to finish with moles of NaOH. So first thing we need to do is go to the periodic table and calculate all the atoms, masses, and add them up. Let's do that now. All right. I'm Added up all the atoms, masses. There was three oxygen, so I had to multiply three times 16, and I get 104.1 grams. I'm going to put that on the bottom. And I'm going to put one mole on the top. Now I'm going to go to moles of the second reactant, which is pretty easy because it's one mole of NaOH for every one mole of NaHSO3. Cancel out my units. I'm left with moles of NaOH, which is what I want. So everything's a one except for the 25 on the top and the 104 on the bottom. So I say 25 divided by 104.1. And I get 0 0.240 moles of NaOH, and that's my answer. All right, here's the granddaddy of them all, the grams to grams. For this one, we're starting at mass of the given. we got to go to moles of the given. Then we go over the mole bridge, and we, go, we wind up at moles of the unknown. Then we got to jump to mass of the unknown, and we're going to finish here. So, the, so our given is the grams of magnesium metal, and our unknown is the mass of magnesium oxide. So we're going from grams to grams. All right, let's let's do it. We start with our given. We got to go to the periodic table and convert. And we know there's 24.3 grams of magnesium for every one mole of magnesium. Then I need to go to moles of the other substance. I know that, well, I got to check my uh, balanced equation. Let's check it out. Well, lucky us, there's two moles of magnesium for two moles of magnesium oxide. In other words, for our given, there's two moles, and for our unknown, there's two moles. So that's really a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's not going to change it much. They're going to cancel out. Easy peasy. So I've written the two moles of the, the two moles for the given in the balance equation and the two moles for the unknown in the balance equation. And now i got to convert to grams of the unknown. This time I'm going to put grams on the bottom and one mole of MgO on the... On, sorry, I'm going to put moles on the bottom. And on the top, I'm going to put the grams. And I gotta go to my periodic table and add up Mg, 1Mg, and 1O. Uh, we already decided magnesium was 24.3. We know that O is 16.0. So we get uh, 40.3 for MgO. So we put that here. Grams of MgO, for every one mole of MgO. And we cancel out units. And we're left with grams of MgO, and that's what we want. So we can put the equal sign and go to our calculator. OK, 
Okay, we put 125. We can cancel out these two, so that's the only other thing on the top is this 40.3, so we'll multiply that, 40.3, uh-oh, 40.3, and then I divide everything on the bottom, which is just this 24.3, divided by 24.3, and I get 207 grams of MgO. Except I did it wrong and I wrote the question down wrong. This isn't 125 grams, it's 1.25 grams, which just means I need to put the decimal here and the answer is 2.07. So just showing that math again, it's 1.25 times 40.3 divided by 24.3 and we get 2.07 and that's our answer, grams of MGO.